blessed thought, all words with heavenly comfort fraught, whate'er I do, where'er I be still, tis God's hand that be. Everybody doing well? Yes, there you go. Good good deal, man. I'm glad to see you're happy this morning. Welcome to everyone, uh, to all those uh, watching via our uh, live Facebook feed and those uh, listening on the transmitter. Glad everybody could be with us this morning. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Under the shadow of thy throne, still may we dwell secure, sufficient is thine arm alone, and our dear Sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame. From everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. Gracious and loving Father, Lord, we thank you for another beautiful day you've given us. Father, for this much-needed rain, and Lord, we thank you for your love. Fathers, we've come before you this morning, and we've, we have these names on our prayer list, these families. Father, I just ask you to continue to touch them with your healing hand. Father, for those here this morning that have lost loved ones, Father, let them feel your presence, your loving arms as they wrap around them. Father, as they, they face this loss, as they travel through this process of mourning, Lord, may they always look to you for that comfort. Father, for our doctors and our nurses, <clears throat> Lord, I just ask for their continued strength. Father, as they work tirelessly every day, taking care of us and our loved ones who are sick. Father, continue to be with those that, uh, in Florida. Father, this condo that has collapsed. Father, those families that are involved. Father, may they too know that you're there with them. All they have to do is reach out to you. Father, for our military and our first responders, Lord, I just ask you to continue to keep them safe. Father, continue to be with this, this congregation. Lord, as we go forward, let us go forth with love and compassion. Father, we live in tough times right now. So let us, as we go forth, with that outreached hand of love, that smile, that those that we come in contact with, that Father, it, it makes a difference. We don't always know what someone's going through. 
and that smile, that handshake, that pat on the back can mean so much to someone. Father, I ask for guidance for the leaders of this country and those around the world. And Lord, I ask a special blessing of strength upon the caregivers of the church as they care for their loved ones. Fathers, we've come and gathered here this morning. Let us join together and pray as you have commanded us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Next hymn is number 405. Let's sing both verses. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. sing all four verses. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what Thou dost love, and do what Thou Until my heart is pure, until with thee I will what will to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, till all this earth be part of me. Okay, well, let's talk about our spiritual blessings and everything today, okay? We're going to look at Ephesians 1 3, uh, through 6, okay? And it says, Give praise to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Those blessings come from the heavenly world. They belong to us because we belong to Christ. God chose us to belong to Christ before the world was created. He chose us to be holy and without blame in his eyes. He loved us, so he decided long ago to adopt us. He adopted us as his children with all the rights children have. He did it because of what Jesus Christ had done. It pleased God to do it. All those things bring praise to his glorious grace. God freely gave us his grace because of the one he loves. Okay? Now, you three guys know how to ride a bike. You know how to ride a bike. You know. How, oh, you can, can you? You can. You can ride a bike too. Huh? A pedal one. I'm talking about a pedal one. Don't hit him now. I know you want to, but we can't do that. Okay. So, you you learned how to ride a bike. Okay. Did you have Did you have help? Since you was three. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll give you that. But at one point, you had to have training wheels, right? You had to have a little help. Right? You had to have a little help. Did you have to have a little help? Okay. Because you know what? Anytime we learn how to ride a bike, there's always some scrapes and bruises and all that kind of stuff, right? And then someday came along, and the training wheels came off. 
Did you have any problems after the training wheels? They took them off? No problems. You just rode right down the road, right? Okay. All right. So, when you were first learning to ride a bike, maybe, and, and maybe some of us are still learning, you know? It's not that I can't ride one, I'm just too lazy to pedal, right? And it should, huh? But I still have to pedal it, man. That's too much energy, okay? I just go out here and get in my truck, turn the key, and I got the air conditioner and all that, and just ride along. The bike's too, no, the bike, that's too much trouble too, man. That's just, that's just too much trouble. That's right. Okay. So when you were first learning to ride a bike, you set some goals for the future. Okay? Maybe like you were trying to learn how to ride the bike at the beginning of the summer, and you're like, okay, guess what? By the end of the summer, by the time we go back to school in August, I'm going to know how to ride this bike. Right? We had to set, you know, goals. We're going to learn how to do something by this time, okay? So we're going to ride it by ourselves. We set our hope to ride the bike by the end of the summer. We're hoping we can do this. And it says most all of us practice while we learn to ride the bike. We can't just jump on and ride off down the sidewalk immediately. It takes time to learn, and we learn each day, right? Kind of like when we go to school. We learn something each day, right? better say yes you learn something every day at school okay just work with me here we learn something every day okay so <laughs> did you know that the bible has letters written to people who lived in certain places did you know that did you know there's there, there there's letters in the bible that were written to specific people in different different areas did you know that you've heard of do you know okay that's good. But you've heard about Paul's letters, I'm sure. It says, today and all through the summer, the letter in the Bible we're learning from is called Ephesians. Most say that it was written by the Apostle Paul to the people who live in a place called Ephesus. He begins the letter this week by telling the people known as Ephesians to remember that they are loved by God and that they are part of God's family. He wants people to know uh, they will experience joy and abundant life with Jesus. You know that, right? That we're going to experience joy and abundant life through Jesus Christ? No, not maybe. It'll happen. You have faith and you believe. Okay? When we remember this, we set our hope in Jesus. Okay? We're setting our hope now in Jesus and not just to be able to ride the bike by the end of the summer. That means we understand that the goal as part of God's family, is to live with love and compassion as Jesus did, okay? It means that we should live each day understanding that our hope is in Jesus. Paul wants to think about how we might live as new people in Jesus. Jesus helps us. Jesus loves us. Jesus sent the power of the Holy Spirit to protect us and to help us live like Jesus did. You've heard us say that, right? We're supposed to walk and talk like Jesus and and love our neighbor like we've been loved, right? You've heard that, right? You hadn't? Who's your Sunday school teacher? Not me. Who teaches you out there? Because we're going to go talk to them if you don't know that. Huh? Miss <laughs> Jan, you're going you're gonna to rat her out, right? Uh, I know you've heard it, okay? I know you have. So... <clears throat> I am right now, right? Jesus sent the power of the Holy Spirit to protect us and to help us live and love like he did. Just as we need help, okay, on riding a bike, we also need help to live a new life through the Holy Spirit and through prayer. Okay? So, how do you think Jesus will help us learn to ride a bike? Guys, don't do that. You're going to be in trouble. How do you think Jesus helped us ride the bike, learn how to ride the bike? Hmm? Hmm? Your dad taught you how? Well, see, Jesus was giving guidance, okay? He was helping you out. He was protecting you the whole time so you didn't, you know, get hurt real bad or something. And had your dad out there, provided that time that he could come out and, and help you learn how to ride the bike. 
okay? And we need to remember that Jesus is with us each and every day, that he's looking over us, he loves us, he's protecting us, and we don't have a whole lot to worry about when we put our hope and our faith in Jesus Christ. Did he now? Okay. Well, what do you say with, uh, with training wheels? Without. Ah, oh, air devils, right? Okay. So let us pray real quick, okay? Let us pray. Loving, gracious God, we do give you thanks. We give you thanks for the letter to the Ephesians reminding them and us that we are blessed to be called your family. Remind us of this each and every day of our lives. In your precious and strong name we pray. Amen. You ever worried about anything? Do you worry? Who's worried about something this morning? Say she's the worrier of the family. Do you really, Katrina? Is he just telling off on you? It's the truth. Okay. Anybody else ever worried about anything? You're not today? Well, just any time. Okay? Uh, so let me ask you this question because, see, some of them are not so brave. They don't want to speak up. So did, did any of that worrying help you any? Has it helped you one? Huh? Makes it worse, right? had not helped you not one little bit, right? Causes a lot of gray hair, like this right here. Hey, because I'm a worrier too, you know, and, and I'm a fixer. I, I, I try to fix things. And, 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 and so in trying to fix things and trying to do it myself, and I don't mean things mechanically or stuff like that, you know, fix life's problems. And, um, and so that causes more worry and more anxiety and all that stuff. And it doesn't help a thing. You know, all it does is make me miserable, you know. You, you, you're all uh, stressed out and, and all that kind of business. So it, it, it's never going to help anything. Now, you know, of course we're concerned about different things, you know, our children, you know, paying bills and all that. But when it gets right down to it, worrying about it and letting it control us is not the answer. It's not going to cure a thing. So let's look at Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 24. We're going to talk about this worrying business. So it says, No one can be a slave of two masters, since either he will hate and one he will love and the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot be slaves of God and of money. This is why I tell you, don't worry about your life. You will eat what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food? And the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add a single cubit to his height by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Learn how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and, and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more? <clears throat> excuse me. Won't he do much more for you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For the idolaters eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The word of God for the people of God. So, ask yourself this question right here. I want you to think about it. Why do we as Christians find so much time to worry? Why do we let worry, you know, creep in and take over? Okay? What are we so worried about? And everybody's looking at me like, why you got to ask questions like that, preacher man? Why you want to put me on the spot this morning? Well, see, I'm putting you on the spot now because I want you to think about it. One day, Jesus is going to put you on the spot, and it's going to be too late to think about it. So let's think about it now. What are we worried about? Oh, I can name, I got the list. 
Let's try here. Money, right? We're always worried about money. I got one shaking his head no. He's not worried about money, okay? There you go. You're exactly right. You want me to tell you what? There, there is one thing you can take with you, and maybe I've told you all this before. I'm going to go off on this rabbit trail real quick, and we'll come back to this. There is one thing you can take with you. Do you know what it is? The preacher's daughter's not supposed to answer because you've heard it a gazillion times. Now, you're cheating. But go ahead and tell them what the one thing it is that you can take with you. There you go. Did everybody hear what she said? All those that you've led to Christ, you know, you've introduced them to Christ, they've accepted Christ and everything. Those people are going with you. So there is one thing you can take. But we, we worry about uh, money. How about clothes? Huh? There you go. So, yeah, I know about McKenzie and her clothes. Heather's over there pointing at McKenzie. But see, Heather likes to blame it on McKenzie. But McKenzie buys shoes and they both share them, see? So, so. So McKenzie's taking a bad rap for that. How about social status? Or we, we, we get worried about where we're at on the social ladder too, right? We got to be at a certain place. I got one back here shaking his head no, but some are, we, we, we've thought about it, okay? Uh, maybe food, how we're going to pay our bills. And how about this one? We worry about tomorrow. We worry about tomorrow. Well, what have I got to do tomorrow? I actually lose sleep at night because things have been so hectic at work for us because we've been so short-handed. You know, I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about the route I've got to run the next day and how I can shave a minute here or, or, or do something a little different to speed it up so I can get back and get a truck unloaded and reloaded so I can be more efficient. But what is that doing for me? It's not doing a thing for me. What it's doing is causing problems because now it's affecting my health. It's affecting my attitude. It's affecting how when I get to work the next morning, you know, that stress that I've put myself under, and so now I'm aggravated. You know, how you, have, you, have you ever got aggravated about something before you even get there? You know, you're already mad before you, something even happens, and, and we need to ask ourselves, why am I letting the world control me like that? Why am I worrying like that? Because it's not helping anything. It causes all kinds of problems. So what are we worried about? Why are we worried? Now, I'm not saying this to mean that, you know, Jesus didn't mean we're not to prepare for life, okay? He never said to be lazy or, or have a lack of initiative, all right? We're supposed to work. We're supposed to provide. But you know what? There are going to come those hard times, and, and we can't control all that stuff. We can't control what's going on in the world. Okay? But what we can control is, is, is what we, me, each one of us, how we're going to handle the situation. So here, let me give you a piece of advice. Rather than worry about it, there's something else that we can do, is there not? What is that? We can pray about it, can't we? We were talking about it in Sunday school this morning. The disciples, you know, you, you see all these stories as you go through Matthew and all these different things that happened to them, and they were always so worried. Always. And Jesus makes that, that statement he always makes. Ye of little faith. What are you worried about? What, what is going on? What, what's so bad? What, why are you worrying? I've got this. He says here that look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into the barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. Right? Now, if he thinks that much about the birds... How much does he think about you? He loves us beyond measure, unconditionally. So if he's going to provide for the birds, don't you think he's going to provide for you? 
Think about that. And he says, you know what? Can any of you add a single cubit to his height by worrying? Look, folks, you can't add a day, not one day to your life by worrying. But let me tell you what you can do. You can start taking them away. And it can happen fast. High blood pressure, ulcers, just the list, the the medical list to just go on. I bumped into a friend of mine yesterday at Walmart and, and see, you know, God has this strange way of, of, of putting people in your path, especially when it comes to a sermon. And so he comes walking in and uh, through Walmart there. We were in there getting what we needed to, to, to bake that mandarin orange cake for this afternoon. And here he comes walking in. Well, immediately I start joking him because he's got an Auburn hat on and an Auburn T-shirt. And I told him, I said, no, you got to think, this guy stands 6'6". I mean, I'm looking up to him the whole time I'm talking to him. And I said, I thought maybe one day you would grow out of that. And uh, he laughed, and he said, man, he said, I've had a bunch of problems. And he, he pulls his hat off, and he turns his head around to me, and the back part of his head right here, the hair is just starting to grow back. And he's got a scar that starts about at the base of his neck, and comes up, comes around, and comes back over here to his ear. And it's all sunk in. And I said, man, what happened? And he tells me the story. He said, well, I had a brain bleed. And they had to go in there and remove part of his skull and repair all that. And and then there had to be a time that it had to heal. And they go back in, they put a plate in. And then they've had to go back in and take the plate out because of problems. And, you know, I'm standing there and I'm thinking, wow, man, you know, that's rough stuff. And I said, well, it was a brain bleed, right? And he said, yep, that's what they told me, brain bleed. I said, what caused it? You know, because I'm always asking people when I see them sick like that, I want to know what caused you all that pain and discomfort because I want to stay away from it. And he said, I'll tell you what they told me, Mike. The number one cause of it was stress and worry and anxiety and everything that caused that. You know, whatever goes on in the brain, I'm not a neurologist and all that, but the the bottom line was it was all the stress and worry that he had going on in his life. He's not working. He'll probably never work again. He's had open-heart surgery a couple years ago. And so when I thought about him last night and I thought about this sermon, you know, you got to look at that for what it is. Was, there, was, was all the stress, all the problems going on worth what now has happened to him? When it's all going on, we think, yes, you know, I, I've, I've got to worry about this. This is my life. These are my problems. And, yes, they're important to me. Folks, it's not worth, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not worth what can happen. And, see, when we're doing all that worrying and that worldly stuff consumes us, and we're spending all of our time worrying about how I'm going to run that route or how I'm going to get this done at work or uh, what's going on at home, how I'm going to get all this done. You know what that takes away from? That takes away from that time that we're supposed to be spending with Christ. It takes away from our prayer time. It takes away from our family time. It takes away from showing each other love because then we're so tweaked up and we're so ready to go that all it takes is somebody saying the wrong thing, and guess what? We got another school shooting. We got another mass shooting in a church. Or we've got something somewhere going on. Because it becomes so overwhelming, finally somebody snaps. Why? Because we've taken Jesus out of the equation, and we've put ourselves in there. And we don't have the capability to handle it. We don't have the capability to solve the problems. Only Christ does. It's time that we put our focus back on him. Uh, Brad was was talking this morning, you know, about about this. It was, (laughs) as he was talking, you know, I'm thinking, wow, I need to just let him preach a sermon. His Sunday school lesson's going right along with it. And, you know, when you think about the cross and, he said, you know, we're looking horizontally. 
We're looking at the world. We're looking at everything just out right here in front of us. It's only when we look vertically, when we look up, that things start to look up. When our lives start changing. And all that worry then we can kind of put behind us. Because now we've put Christ back in control. Now we're following Him. Now we're putting, as we said this morning to children, our hope back in Christ. Okay? And when we do that, life doesn't seem near as hard. Talks about, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, why do we, uh, you worry about clothes and all that kind of stuff, you know? It, it, it's because we've, we've allowed society to put all these, these uh, expectations on us. You know, we have to dress a certain way. We have to wear a certain name brand clothes. I remember when I was growing up, Oh, man, if you wasn't wearing Nike and wearing Levi jeans, you know, there was something wrong with you. You know, if you went to Walmart and got the, the jeans and tennis shoes from Walmart, you know, you, you must have been just poor white trash or something. And we've allowed that to go on through life. And, and, it, and it still happens today. Kids are bullied today because maybe they don't measure up to what the other kids think they need to be. And they go to school and they're in misery. And we do it. We keep that machine running. The fact of the matter is this. We need to quit worrying about clothes. We need to quit worrying about all these material things and quit letting the, the, the world, the worldly things, creep into our lives and take control. The Scripture said, it, it didn't say, seek first the world, did it? I don't think you're ever going to find in there where it says, seek first the world. Not at all. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Folks, He's going to take care of all of our problems. There's no need to worry. There's no need to allow this to take control of us and give us all these health problems, all these uh, this anxiety, then we're, we're put on medication and all this other stuff. And I understand there's medication out there that we have to take, and all I'm not putting down, don't go and leave and say, the preacher said, don't take any more medication. I didn't say that. There are things that we have to do. But we, when we let it consume us, when it's, that's our, our object in life is to get up and say, you know, i got to do this, this, and this. I don't think I can do this. Wow, it's never going to end. And, and, and so the worry and the anxiety and our blood pressure and everything, it just gets all bubbling up and, and, it, and it takes control. We become enslaved to the material things in life. Okay? It's so bad. It's so bad. It causes marital problems. Okay? It causes theft. People will go steal to get better things because they think it's going to move them up that ladder a little bit, you know. Oh, I got this now. doesn't matter how I got it, but I got it. And you know what? It's even caused wars. Think about that. It's caused them. Material things. I had to go fight in the world in, in a war. Some of that was over material things. Some of it was over one person thinking that they were mighty enough that they had to have control of all this oil. Now, they also went in and did other things uh, to the Kuwaitis and, 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 and did some pretty ugly things to the women and children there. But they wanted control. I got to be the big man on the block. I got to flex my muscles and I got to show everybody I'm in control. I'm in power. And so wars have been started over that kind of stuff. We need, listen to me, we need to enjoy and rejoice in the things God has provided us with and the things that He will provide. We've got to, we've got to slow down, put the brakes on. And we've got to get focused back on Christ. 
just as he calmed the storm uh, when the disciples were in the boat. He made the sea calm. He'll calm the storm in your life too. When you focus back on him. What happened to Peter when he took his eyes off Christ? He sank, right? We sink a lot of times too because we take our eyes off Christ. We need to stay focused. The bottom line, we need to seek God first and everything else second. We're so worried in this lifetime right now. We're so worried, so caught up in business, so caught up in, in, in the things that's going on in the world. We're so worried about the, uh, the, this, this short time that we have in this life that we forget to put our efforts in securing our eternity. We're letting what's going on now take control. Like I said, what are you worried about? And nobody could tell me for the most part, okay? And, and, you know, I told you, one day we're going to stand before Christ and he's going to ask the question. It's going to be too late to come up with an answer then because we focus so much on the now, okay? We put, we put no effort in, in, into eternity. Think about what you're giving up. Think about how great it's going to be one day when you walk through those gates. What are you doing today to secure that? What are we doing? He said, stop worrying. He says, you know what? Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let's worry about today. And let's not even worry about it. Let's rejoice in what we have. We have some sunshine. We have uh, the rain that's come and give nourishment to the ground, to our crops, to the gardens and all that kind of stuff. Let's rejoice that we have this beautiful building to come and worship in. That we have an education building. Let's rejoice in our health that we were able to get up this morning. We had clothes to put on. That we have food to eat. That we're going to come back today and we're going to gather as a body of Christ. And we're going to eat this meal. We're going to fellowship with each other. Let's rejoice in that. Let's not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough. It's, it's going to be enough. It'll take care of itself. Let's, let's focus on today. Let's focus on Christ. First and foremost each and every day. Let's teach our children, focus on Christ. When you get up in the morning, focus on Christ. Bishop Reuben Job said the first thing he did, and I may have told you this story, every morning when he got up, he spent, and, and I'm not, there again, I'm not telling you you got to spend this much time. Each person's different. But he spent an hour in prayer. Every morning. Every single solitary morning. He started his day with him and God. Folks, if you don't have two minutes, I suggest you take that two minutes and you get focused on God. And when you focus on God and you go out that door in the morning and, and you meet the world, and it's standing back there like a boxer, and it's saying, come on, I got something for you. <laughs> Just smile and say, I got something for you too, and his name is Jesus. Bring it. He hung on that cross. He died for me because he loves me that much. Okay? And he loves me so much, he's going to see me through this day. He's going to provide for me everything I need to get through this day and he's going to deliver me back home tonight. There may be a few bumps in the road, you know, but that's okay. I know he's with me. So bring it. Folks, let us not be consumed by worry. Ask yourself, are you living for Christ, or are we living for the world and its possessions? 
Are we trying to secure our eternity or just getting by in today's world? Are we just going along and saying, well, here I am. Go forth with a smile, with love and compassion, and go forth with confidence that Christ is with you. You know he's there. Put your faith in that and know that he's just, you just got to reach out and get a hold of him. He's there. And he's going to provide. Stop the worry. Stop the chaos. And enjoy your life. That's what he wanted you to do. Amen. As we have our final songs this morning, if you have a prayer concern, maybe you got that worry this morning. I invite you to come up and hand it over to Christ right here and say, here it is. I'm not going to allow this to consume me anymore. Or if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to come down. Come down and get to know him. It's going to be a life-changing experience. Sing first and second verses of 382. 382. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will, while I am waiting. Yielded and still, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Savior, today. Wash me just now, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence, humble. Final song is 128, the third verse. Lord, I would place my hand in thine. Allow him to lead you, okay? Remember, he's, he's, he's there each and every step of the way. Don't forget, again, tonight at 6, we'll have our meal. And, um, uh, you know, and, and there's one other one that I don't know is on the prayer list or not. But, you know, we, we, we forget about this, this young lady right back here on this piano some days. I like to aggravate her and give her a hard time. But, but, you know, she's been dealing with uh, some more flare-ups from her health issues. And, um, and, and so we need to remember Amanda. You know, she does a lot, and uh, like everybody else. And, and uh, sometimes I forget to, to think about her, about that prayer list, and, and all the, 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 the pain and suffering that she goes through. And she's been through a lot this week. So uh, remember her in your prayers and um, that she gets to feeling better. And, and, and all, I mean, some may not know it. She doesn't go in there because she doesn't want to be out here. She needs to be in there in that comfortable chair uh, because of health issues. So um, we just, we, we need to remember her and, and all the other folks on our prayer list. Anything we need to add? Anything that you may have thought of?
okay? No more worrying, all right? Got to turn that stuff loose, folks. If you keep worrying, it turns your hair loose and everything and, and, and all that. So it's something that we, 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 we need to think about. We joke about it and we, we laugh and ha, ha, ha. If the preacher only knew, if he only had my problems, folks, I could give you a list of them and put my name at the top and say, well, here's mine, let's match. In the end of the day, we're not, it, it's not going to help us at all. There you go. So, so turn it loose. Give it over to Christ and walk away from it, and it's going to be okay. All right? It, we're going to get through it. We're going to do it together. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, Lord, again, I thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. Father, for each and every person here. Father, for a great work that each, that each person does. And I thank you for them. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross for our sins because he loved us so much. But Father, I ask for strength for each and every person here that we go forth and we lay the worry aside. And we just hand it over to you. we allow ourselves to be guided by you. Father, our lives will be much, much better when we look to you and we quit looking out to the world. Father, I ask you to deliver each and every, every person here uh, safely home today, Lord, and be with us as we return tonight. Lord, as we depart, let us do so with your peace and your mercy. This I ask in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.